Hi, my name is Real Magic. No. <laughs> Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. That'd be a weird name, wouldn't it? Uh, this is Real Magic Review, and this is Solo. Before we do this, can you please like and subscribe and then go and check out onlinemagic.co. That's my membership site. It's been going 10 years. I'm awfully proud of it. I won't bang on about it, but it's very, very good. 800 plus videos, live sessions every week and unless I can't make it, which are uploaded. So you get hours of content every single month. None of this kind of one trick every three months business. Don't know who does that, by the way. I just thought I'd make myself sound better than other people that probably don't exist. But anyway, let's get on with this. Do not turn off. You might think that, oh, I don't need that, I'm not going to watch this, I'm just going to watch reviews of magic tricks. Don't, because I think this might inspire something. And it's been a huge, huge uh, revelation to me. Very quickly what it is, then a bit of background about why it's important. I know I waffle a lot, but I think this, a lot of you may be in the same situation. And what you can do with it. I'm not going to go into all of the things, there is so much in solo that I think that it would take me to, I don't want to make this a demonstration. However, I will demonstrate certain things uh, and I will back this up with the comments on comment shows, which I know I haven't been, sorry, I'm not being unprofessional. I'm just going to open the app. Uh, I know I haven't been doing as many. I've been working on my show, which I'll talk about in a minute. And oh gosh, it says low battery. Let's see if this works. The answer to that was no, it wasn't going to work. I was just about to start this review with no battery in the iPad because I'm grossly, um, I was going to say unorganized, but I'm not actually, because I've just been using this. So what this does is it cues music sounds at the moment. It's going to do more and everything for your show. Now, the minute I hear that, I go, oh, it's going to be really complicated. I don't want to have to think about that when I'm trying to perform, especially performing a new show, which I get awfully nervous about, very intimidating and all, uh, very intimidated and all scared. So I don't have something new in my head, which is why I was a bit silly because I said to Sam Fitton, who designed this, a um, very clever human being, he designed this and I said to him, look, fancy me reviewing it um, and I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll use it for my new show. So you can get someone that can talk about their first use of it, someone that isn't ultra techie, which I'm not, and someone that has always been worried about sound cues at gigs and you know, when you do corporate gigs, you're not working with your own sound person, AV person. So to spend time with someone who may not get the timing right, I just can't. I've tried sort of a little bit before and it was just, it's always been a nightmare. No fault of theirs, just very busy people haven't got time to sit with me for hours for a corporate gig. So I said to him, I'm going to use it in my show. This unfortunately was about a week before my show, which added a lot of stress or could have. But the, what it did was really, really interesting. So what it is, and I'll do my best here, do ask questions, is it's a, a reader, but much more than that. But you will have a load of sound cues, which may be songs, which may be walk-on music, which could be sound effects that you are going to want to control in line with your actions. So some people will have very, very strict routines to music, or they'll have a very strict show and they'll know their sound cues and all that, and they'll have it, that on a bit of software. For me, this is for people who want a little bit of flexibility. They want total control of when music starts, when sound effects come in, when all that stuff happens without having to go up to a button and press it. And that always looks really weird. It's like, hang on a minute. And I've tried that before and pressing the phone and I tried it on the streets, the street performer a couple of times. It just horrible, horrible, horrible. Doesn't work. It does work for some people, but absolutely not for me. I also want flexibility to be able to go, actually, that routine doesn't feel right now. I might put that a bit later in the moment. I do a lot of improvising. It's always the way I've been. And I kind of mix things up, mix things around, actually decide, actually, I want to do this silently without music today. And it gives you the ability to do that. The reason this is, and this is what I thought, and someone said, I think it sounds a bit like a gimmick. And I was worried about that when I read this. I thought, is this going to be that, is it just a bit gimmicky? <laughs> Absolutely not. You get, oh, it's just started. Hang on. <laughs> I've just put it near the thing. I've just put it near the thing, which demonstrates what it does. Uh, you probably won't be able to hear that. So <laughs> I forgot I turned it on. That will be in, it could be in a card box. It could be in your pocket. And I'll tell you how I used it. 
And when a piece of music is required or a sound, you have an RFID tag. A lot of you would have heard of these, a lot of you would know exactly what they are, but some of you will be like me a few months ago going, I kind of know what they are. And that I have, and this is not how you're going to use it, I have a little envelope with toxic ending, the ending to my show. That RFID tag is programmed, which is so easy. You don't have to be techie at all with that music to start. So I know that when I touch that onto there, it vibrates, tells me it's kicked in, and music will start. And that will play out the show. I also have one which is called Cards. And again, this is a horrible way to use it, but <laughs> this is how you use it. I'll pick that up and I'll tap that against it, which is in my pocket. And that will start a piece of music. At its most simple. And visualize, that's a bit of my show. Coins, rope, all those bits, the rings. Right, that's at its most basic, that's all it does. Now, because these are stickers, RFID stickers, and you get these with, I'll go through the, the, some of the stuff you get in a minute. You don't have them in envelopes like that. I did for a lot of my show because I just didn't have time to, to work it through. But for my cone and ball routine, I had a small one. You get small ones and big ones on the cone itself. So as I started, I moved it up there, tapped it against my pocket, felt the vibration. And what the vibration does, it doesn't just say, oh, yeah, I felt that tap. It says, yes, this has happened. We've sent this to the thing. The music is definitely going to start. It says all that stuff. So you know that when you feel that vibration... And you can have a light if you haven't got it on you that tells you, you know things are going to work. And I've worked with this a lot, a very, 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 very much. I practiced with it, but for that week, I just caned it. I, and it didn't fail once with me. And we go through a little bit of the techie stuff in a minute, but again, I don't want to get bogged down on it. So think about that. You've got a tag on a deck of cards on a prop on everything else. And that's how I will do it in the end. Um, I had a Miser's Dream bucket. I wanted to put it on the bucket, but then I thought if they see a sticker on it. So there's different ways of doing it. I could put it in the, and I didn't have time to rehearse with the tag, so they didn't see the sticker. But there are loads of things you can do this to incorporate this into a show where people won't see that you're, you're doing something. Now, I didn't, my show was very informal and it was with a lot of people I knew, and it was with a lot of people I knew. So I didn't mind just sort of tapping something that was open. I was going to put it in white envelopes, I forgot, so it looked horrible. It's like a weird like, wage envelope, but I picked it up, tapped, and went into the routine after a little chat, except for the things I had set up. So some of the many, many features you get, and what I will say is that Sam is developing this as we go. The lovely thing about the hardware sorted, it's great. It's a really powerful reader. It uses the most up-to-date Bluetooth, but I've got older Bluetooth on this iPad, and it was absolutely fine because it was close to me. Basically, if you're on that iPad a long way away from you, you might want to get a more modern one or a phone, or, or and it can be uh, Android and uh, iOS. But the the... Hardware is absolutely solid, fits in a card box, <clears throat> and you can uh, go through wood. Like it's only, The only problem it's going to have is things like ferrous metals, magnetic metals, but if you've got that under a table and the table's not like three foot thick, you're going to be able to put it under a table. So when you put the prop over that, it will kick in. Loads and loads, and you know, you'll start thinking of how to do this. The software, oops, it's kicked in again. I'll just put it on another RFID tag. The software... Um, is the bit that always worries me. Am I going to have to spend, and a week before my show, I was just like, with COVID, I was like, is this going to be really complex? And I sat and watched all the tutorials, which are excellent, and after that, I knew exactly what to do. It is so easy. Programming the tags, you just hold them against the thing. You, then you can name them. You have to, you can't just link it with Spotify, like playlists and things like that. You have to find the, or, um, mp3s of the songs or wav files and use them and import them into it sam goes through everything you need there's not one thing he doesn't cover so what you have and i'll um put a little screen video of this is you just upload the pieces of music onto your main screen and you could then have over like default settings for the whole thing. So if in your default settings, you can have every tune fades up, every tune fades down, and you can have all these settings and that's fine. What I did is used individual settings for each track. So some tracks faded up, some tracks were on a loop, which is so important. If you're doing a new routine to music 
and you want to loop it just in case you finish early and it starts again and some music that works quite well because it hasn't got much of an intro that was really really important within those individual settings of each track you just press a button you've got all the things there i will go through some of them that i found really important fade in so i want a track to fade in or out no i didn't on this one because i did want it to loop did uh, actually this didn't want to loop but if i do want it to loop i don't want fade in override that means that when that track starts it stops all others i wanted that for all of my things but some people might want a little mix so some tracks may mix together if you're using sound effects or different things some of these are pro tools as in with a lot of apps you can upgrade you don't need them to use it but some of you will find it uh, interesting um useful what i do like is that for certain shows you're not and it gives you that option so perfect timing is something i only used on one routine and what that does if you can set a delay for when you tap it and that music starts. But what this does, say you've got a 10 second delay, you're chatting away, it will then give you a haptic, like three, like for the last three seconds of that delay, before it starts a countdown, one, two, three, you hear that vibration, you know exactly when that music's gonna kick in, which is great. I actually completely nosed it up because I forgot to do something at the beginning of my routine and it, it messed up, but it didn't matter uh, because I still felt, like, oh, three seconds, I've got to go, right, give it back, here we go. Uh, double tap is another thing where you can hold the tag that you've just used to start it back up for two seconds and it will stop it and reset it for when you want to start again. That's if you start a routine, make a mistake, you can just stop it and it goes back to the beginning. But you don't need that and we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, auto play next track, that's something that if that track plays out, it just goes on to the next one in your order and that's gonna be great for some people if they just know that you know, it starts there, it goes into the next one, or they want two pieces of music in the same routine to blend in to each other. Interestingly, and I think this is so important, you get the ability to edit or trim the, the, that track within this individual setting. So for example, if it fades out and fades back in, you might not want that, you might want it to loop and cut the end off so it just sounds like one track. So if you've got a bed of music in the background that's quite low, you can just have that on repeat. It's just so easy to use. Default settings, I'm not going to go into all of them. I wonder if there's anything I, sh I should. The app settings, of course, you can create tags to do different things. These are really important. I'm glad I looked at this, actually. You can have a tag set to just play and pause, which means you stop, bang, pauses, pauses, same tag, start again, same tag, stop again. For some people, like something called the go button you're going to be able to do your whole show with one tag so the go button is basically uh, a similar thing stops the next track and stops uh, plays the next track and stops the current track so if you have a track that's a bed you're just talking 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 you stops that one and starts playing the next one and i think you know you can you can run your whole show with just that one tag if you have that sort of show that's just sort of chunks of stuff that you just you don't need to sort of bring any other things in and different props if you see what I mean. If you don't, ask me a question. Again, I thought I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going through everything. Um, the level shift is a button that you can press and it just brings the music down to a certain level so you can talk over it and then brings it back up when you tap it again. Um, a panic button. Now this is, I think they shouldn't have named it the panic button because it makes you feel like it's only when things go wrong. All the panic button does is stop everything. Now that's brilliant when you've got like walk on music and this is the simplest of things but even when i've done this with av people they've sort of got it a little bit wrong so i give them walk on music i walk on i kind of wait for them to stop it i give them a little wink to stop it they kind of don't really see me properly and it stops a bit late and it's a bit eggy i can just start the walk on music i had the little tag which i had in my show in my sleeve uh did it stalk on i didn't use walk on music in my show but i used it later on just press that, you sleeve against the thing and it just stops. And again, if you're doing a routine, which is a longer routine, um, or a routine for music and you slightly mistime it, you can tap that, you can set that um, panic button to fade out, and it just fades out at the end of your routine if you finish it a bit early. So it's you've got all this control, you've got all these outs, you've got all this stuff, which means you don't have to get to a gig if you're a bit nervous, it's a new show, or if the sound person's doing other stuff, if you're a magician, you work with bands, they'll often spend hours sound checking a band and just say to you, oh, we've got five minutes. And you go, what? And it's, it's a real horrible thing that I've had. So I just gave up. 
Now, years and years and years ago, I would say probably 26 years ago, 25 years ago, I saw Cirque du Soleil and there was an act that uses sound effects and obviously it was timed perfectly and I thought I'd love to do something like that. And I actually did a weird act with sound effects, but didn't quite work, the mic wasn't great. And, but I had this idea of setting loads of sound effects, but I just couldn't, I can't bear that not having flexibility within a performance be able to improvise. And now with this, I'm thinking I can have sound effects set up. So any moment I can back, I can start it, I can stop it, I can bring another one in. I can have things set in my pockets to start different sound effects. I can, even if you're doing stand-up comedy or something like that, that you're using sound. You don't have to press a button, it's just there, bang. You can just keep bringing it in and out. And it's just, I've, I've stayed up at night and I'm saying that because last night I started thinking about this. And I think the possibilities are just endless. You can just have a little amp. It's not like you have to have a sound person. If you've got an amp, like a street performing amp, and you want to bring sounds in and out with that, it's great. Without, again, having to go up to a phone, have a look at it, press it, doesn't work properly. We've all seen it and it just looks really icky. And uh, if you've got a comedy, and anything that isn't even about magic or comedy or anything else, it could be just a piece of theater with music in that you wanna, and like I said, you don't, they won't see those cues coming. I used it very like, openly because I kind of thought it was a bit cool. And I, wasn't, I didn't mind people seeing me do it, but you can hide all those cues and everything. So, longer than I expected, but I think, so many of you, when I put a thing on Facebook, said, I don't get, you know, will I be able to use it for this? I, I, and will you do a demonstration? So I, I don't want to do a demonstration, but I wanted to, to uh, give you those kind of the ways I used it. And I found it so helpful. You know, you're still going to have to work with someone about volume and stuff like that, but you can set the volumes in the app. And after a while, you're going to be used to what they are. So you can know that your AV person or on your amp, you're just going to be able to set a master volume and it's all going to be totally fine contains your solo you, when you buy it you can get the app you get the by the way even if you don't if you just wanted to use the app without the the unit you could because it's, it's still a better way of pressing start and stop on a on a playlist you've got it all there and you just have the the layout and you just you can start and stop and just with your finger again you just bang you see it. it's not about sort of scrolling through and pressing a button and maybe pressing the wrong button it's all super super easy uh, you get uh, 10 5 centimeter meter RFID stickers, um, your cable, and your, uh, your smaller RFID stickers, I think. Sam's making things like buttons with, with RFID on, so you could have one in your sleeve or on your jacket, which you press against with, with certain um, things programmed into it. The battery life lasts forever. You can have a setting where it lasts for like eight hours or even more. And if you want it to be more powerful, it will last a bit less time, but it's way enough for your show and your pre-show and your after show. And to be honest, a lot of you aren't gonna want a kind of, a, 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 the strong one on because it's got too much range and, uh, and you could sort of accidentally hit it like that. So it's, there's loads built onto this. There's all that kind of stuff that you think, oh, what if that happened? It's not gonna, Sam has thought of this, but if you do have any problems, there is a, a you know, a page and a website where you can sort of say, oh, I think you should do this. Now, it's not perfect. It's not for everybody. Like some people are going to want that kind of more standard, everything, you know, in, you know, a software that does more and you can sort of um, edit more. Something like Logic, obviously you can edit your sound files and bring them into this, but you might want something that's a, a little bit more professional. And this is professional, but I mean, if you're doing loads and loads of sound, you've worked with sound for ages and you're very techy, that's what I meant. This is for people who don't want to deal with a lot of that, but still want control over their music. Uh, and other things, little things, but again, I think are going to be developed. The edit, like I said, you can edit the top and uh, the top and tail of certain songs. That is a little bit, it's very easy, but you, you, you can't really scrub the edit. So if you want to edit the end, you've got to listen to the end and then kind of chop it off. It's just a little bit more time consuming and you know, some people have said, what about lights and video and things like that? Well, Sam is apparently building this into it. So at the moment, it's just sound cues, but all of this stuff is getting developed. And for that, you won't need more hardware other than your lights and that and the cables and things like that. Um, but, you, you know, it's all going to come off this unit. You can have two units. So if you're a double act, you can have different units with different programs on or link or they link together. And uh, and it's all on an iPad or a phone or a tablet. And it's just great. So much more to talk about. But I think for any magician that just wants to enhance 
those routines. A lot of the routines I usually do quietly actually did with this bed of music and it just sounded like a different thing. It was a lovely thing and my rhythm changed and I felt more, more at flow with the, with the music, uh, with, the, with the routines I was doing. So that's that. Any questions? Okay, because, you know, it's not a cheap thing, but if you're a performer, it's, it's, a, it's an investment. I think it's 895 pounds or dollars at the moment. Don't quote me on that. I'm rubbish at prices, but you've only got a click and you'll see. And uh, Sam is available for any questions, as am I. And I will answer them on the next Comments on Comment show. So thank you very much indeed. That is Solo by Sam Fitton. I think he's done a great job and a lot of people are talking about this and I absolutely don't blame them. It's a corker. That's all it is. Uh, thank you very much, Sam, for sending that to me. Do use the links below. If you're not sure, use the links. Have a good read around and see if it's something you could use. And, um, and now go and look at onlinemagic.co or after that. And please like and subscribe. Take care. Have a great one.